Hey, welcome back to School on Business, and we still have Julia Bonner with us. So, Julia, how did you get where you are today, and who and what helped you along the way? You know, I think about my professional journey, and I mm -hmm. think one of the best and most valuable things that's been intentional for me, but also benefits every entrepreneur is the intention behind their relationships and really making it a priority to invest in and develop the relationships that you have. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of examples of how that's applied to my life is one, before founding my own business, I had never traditionally applied for a job. All of the um, positions I had came through relationships and referrals through mm -hmm. work I'd done. Right. And that was sort of a, um, it, it was just a smooth process and also demonstrated the amount of trust that I was able to build in those relationships mm -hmm. for somebody to say, you know, um, you need to speak with this person. So that's been great. And then secondarily, as for our business, much of our business comes through referrals or growth from existing clients. Mm -hmm. And so by really finding ways to build new relationships and develop the ones you have, right. it'll benefit you tremendously. Yeah. That, um that is not the first time I've heard that I believe on it. this show, mm -hmm. and I've had a lot of lot of successful folks. So, what are some common misconceptions or misunderstandings that you encounter about PR and how it works? Well, I think two things um, come immediately to mind. One is. A press release is not a PR strategy. And especially with small businesses, we see and often get approached by a company that might say, you know, we're doing this exciting thing and we want to put out a press release. And while that might not be a bad idea, it's becomes tactical and diminishes the value to do just a release when you should really right. think about what are we doing and our the scope of communication strategies that we have available to us and how are we maximizing those. So it's important to think about beyond the traditional press release. Right. What else does your communication strategy involve? So when when you're thinking about PR is this, do you think of it in this way, that with PR, what you, you are, you're teaching the world mm -hmm. about who you are and what you value and how you help people. Is that more or less how you view it? Yeah, and sharing your story, because yeah. the truth is people buy on what they're connected to. They yeah. buy on the story. And if you, if they understand that what you're offering has value to them, their values align with yours, they're going to be much more inclined to become a raving customer than somebody right. that might do business with you once and not feel inclined or remember you down the road if they need something right. something similar. So when, when you say it's important to have kind of a, an overall strategy, yeah. Um, what that strategy looks like is both what the message is and how to tell your story. Absolutely. And the messaging, the messaging um, piece of that is sometimes, especially for small business owners, where you have to start because if you're telling somebody here one thing and over here something else, you start to dilute what the brand really means. Right. And to have a successful business, you need people to understand what your business and value proposition is very quickly. Mm -hmm. And so having a clear message um, and ha being able to translate that to your customers right. is critical. And a, so a clear message with no more than maybe two bullet points to it. Yeah, ideally. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that it and and to be consistent with that, so that when people think of you, they think of those two things exactly, which you've really strategically thought through. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Um, are there any other things, common misconceptions, or? Yeah, I yeah. think the other um, that we sometimes encounter is the timeline for results. You know, in. In PR, what we do in foundationally is help build relationships. So that mm -hmm. might be with the media, that might be with your employees and in internal communications, that yeah. might be externally with investors or um, you know other vendors that you might do business with. And like any relationship, even a friendship, what you need to do is invest time and really put all the pieces in place to make sure that that relationship yes. becomes fruitful. Yeah. And so we always, you know, if if you're a small business that's considering either bringing PR, a PR person in house, or engaging an outside firm, mm -hmm. it's just important to consider the timeline to really see results. Because if someone tells you yeah. they can do PR in two to three weeks, I would say be very cautious. No, because a good strategy yeah. is going to take time to really develop and mature. Yeah, and, yeah. and also in be, being fair to companies like you, um, 
you can't somebody can't realistically say okay we'll give you a month and see what you can do it, right it, it doesn't yeah. work like that yeah and um, marketing is the same way mm -hmm. it just it takes a while you're exactly right yeah, yeah. and consistency okay um, any other misconceptions or misunderstandings you know those are the two biggest okay. um, and I think the two we encounter most frequently especially for small businesses who are trying to allocate their resources in the most mm -hmm. effective way so so to kind of summarize or here's what I think I've heard sure um, you need to have you need to be able to tell your story it needs to be concise and you need to be very consistent in that message and it shouldn't be um, something that just popped in your head it needs to be something you've really thought through yes it, yes having a strategy yeah. is the most important part um, because right. there's a lot of tactical things you can do but right. ultimately there they won't be as valuable as right. really taking a look at how this function supports your business and, and its growth. The other thing that I heard, which you just touched on, is um, you don't do one thing. This is a, um, you know, Good to Great was a great business book that I love. And in that book, he talks about the, the flywheel starts turning and it's very slow and it goes faster and faster. And you have to you have to put the time and effort into it over time. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Invest. Yes. Invest. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, what has been your most effective PR strategy to grow Pierce Public Relations, and what can other companies learn from that? We do a lot of proactive PR for ourselves, which has been really helpful mm -hmm. and a testament to what we do for our clients. Right. Um, and two of the ways that we do that is myself and our team members often write about our experiences or takeaways mm -hmm. from clients and projects and what what might be helpful for other people mm -hmm. to know and place those articles in the media. If you have a blog, that's great too, but mm -hmm. just make sure that, that you're capturing your experiences in a way that will demonstrate your value. So um, you all are in PR, you, you are wanting, your customers are gonna be other companies that mm -hmm. are, are, I guess, B2B. So where would you have these things printed? Well, it really depends on what, who your company is. Here um, yeah. locally, if you're a locally based, say, tech firm, yeah. you might want to look at the business media in town. It also might benefit you to look at the trades in your vertical mm -hmm. and see what outlets right. there might be great places Where for you your can. content. Yeah. Okay, so you all would, would um, submit articles to public, to PR industry journals. Yeah, to, to just the media outlets yeah. um, in that space. Okay. Um, and then we work with our clients to develop what that content is, where it should go to be most yeah. effective, and then of course how you merchandise it. Because once right. it runs, you want to make sure that you're using it in a way that's valuable to your business. Absolutely, you know? yeah. It, it needs to, one way or another, come around to revenue exactly. at some point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, are there any other things you can think of there about what you have done, what you and your colleagues at Pierce have done to, you know, to yeah. PR yourselves. Yeah. The other thing that we often do is, is speaking engagements. Right. So a lot of education about what we do, how to build a brand, what are the things if you're a small mm -hmm. business that you might want to consider. If you've only got X amount of dollars, how do you really make the mm -hmm. most of that? Um, and so we're, we proactively do that all the time. So that's right. our own industry groups and then to businesses themselves, whoever might need that kind of mm -hmm. um, resource and experience shared with them. So an, an example, I don't know if you've done this, but the American Marketing Association has a chapter here. Yeah. You might do a talk at their um, you know, yearly event or something like exactly. that. Exactly. If you've got, you know, there are hundreds of trade industry groups, that mm -hmm. might be a great place to start. Think about your chamber of commerce. Think right. about these places where, you know, you, you mm -hmm. know you might have um, either peers or potential customers in the room. Right. How can you share your message in a way that creates value for them? Right. And then consider, you know, doing that, putting together a presentation yeah. and sharing your expertise. It's a great way and an authentic way to build your brand. Awesome. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Or, okay, well, ladies and gents, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> I said that to the... <laughs> 